Starship will be the most useful and multi-purpose rocket ever made, or will it? Is SpaceX overpromising? They'll need to make a huge amount of Starship variants, but is that even feasible? And how many are they even planning to make? And why am I asking all of these questions? Let's take a deep dive into how SpaceX plans to revolutionize rocketry to make a Starship fit for any mission. Starship started life off as, and still intends to be, SpaceX's human ferrying Mars rocket. But starting in 2017, the company has been investigating launching other payloads on Starship, making it an all-in-one solution for any type of spaceflight. Since then, multiple variations of the rocket have been proposed, some serious and some hypothetical. The first version proposed, of course, was the crew carrying Mars Starship. This will have crew quarters, plenty of storage, flaps, tiles and some kind of solar panels. However, as of writing, the solar panel design doesn't seem to have been sorted out quite yet. The Mars crew variant will likely be the most complicated version to design and implement. The massive life support system, long-term storage of cryogenic propellants and other issues will need to be solved before Starship can finally send humans to Mars. Versions of this design should first fly on the Dear Moon and Polaris 3 missions, the latter of which will be the first ever crewed flight of Starship. Also, derivatives of the Mars version may be used for Starship point-to-point -point travel on Earth, including US Department of Defense studies for cargo delivery anywhere around the world. But at least for private citizen travel, point-to-point -point will be a while away, much to Chris Bergen's despair. And finally, it recently came out that SpaceX pitched a space station variant of Starship to NASA for use as a commercial space station in low Earth orbit. Unfortunately, very few details are known about this, but it would likely need to have some kind of solar panels, multiple docking ports, and probably not be reusable. The large interior volume would be excellent for a space station, so it would not be surprising if this version is eventually developed. But Starship won't be going anywhere beyond Earth orbit on its own. It needs to have its propellants refilled on orbit. Enter the tanker. At first, these will simply be uncrewed Starships with an empty payload bay, giving them the performance to reach orbit with a significant amount of propellant left on board. The tankers will feature tiles and flaps as they need to return to Earth to be launched again. Several of these tanker flights will be needed to fill up the third Starship variant, the depot. As its name suggests, the depot will store a full load of propellant on orbit for beyond Earth ships to dock to and be refilled. According to Renders, it seems that the depot may be longer than normal Starships. It will have no flaps or tiles or a payload bay. It is likely that these depots will stay in orbit for quite a while, being refilled by tankers and filling other ships several times. And all of this refilling talk brings us to what may be the most important Starship variant currently in development, the HLS, or Human Landing System. This is the lunar lander that will be used to land crews on the moon for Artemis 3 and 4. This modified Starship will have no flaps or tiles and instead be painted white. It will also have another feature setting it apart from other vehicles, a set of smaller engines up near the top of the lander. These methane oxygen powered thrusters will be used for the final portions of descent and the initial portions of ascent from the lunar surface. This will reduce the dust kicked up by the vehicle as the raptors on the aft end would shoot up large amounts of dust and rocks, not to mention leaving a sizable crater. The HLS will need to be refilled by the depot in low Earth orbit before making its way to lunar orbit, awaiting the arrival of the Orion capsule and its crew. Also being considered is an uncrewed cargo lunar lander as part of NASA's commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS, program. As the render shows, this version would be ideal for launching large payloads to the lunar surface, like rovers. As of recording, no uncrewed cargo lander starships have been contracted by NASA, but the option still stands. Similar versions to this will eventually be flown to Mars to deliver outpost materials, propellant refineries and scientific equipment prior to and alongside human landings. Now let's move to the other uncrewed cargo variants. These will fly well before any crew does. In fact, one of them has flown before. We'll start with the Starlink launcher. This version features all the reuse hardware fins, tiles and possibly landing legs and has one short but wide payload bay door which will dispense the Starlink satellites contained in its nose cone. This whole assembly has been affectionately nicknamed the Pez Dispenser. 
This is the design that most early orbital Starship prototypes will be modelled after, and it's the variant that Ship 24 was, and 25 and 28 are, and beyond it also seems this design will be continuing. And you can keep up to date with exactly which ship variant SpaceX is producing by checking out Starbase Live, our 24-7 livestream of all things going on down in Boca Chica. In the hopefully not too distant future, Starship will move on to launching larger payloads requiring a taller payload bay opening. In fact, SpaceX already has some contracts to launch geostationary satellites on the rocket, much like they do with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. This will require a much larger payload bay door, the exact design of which is not yet clear. Two main designs seem to be contenders, one being the monolithic chomper design first seen in 2017, and the second being similar in design to the Space Shuttle's payload bay with two opening doors on the nose cone barrel. While these payload launcher ships are expected to usually be recoverable, Elon Musk has previously hinted at an expendable version without flaps and tiles. This would be used for payload launches outside of Earth orbit such as large probes to the outer solar system. Of course, any such flight would require on-orbit refillings. Unfortunately, this wouldn't really be a perfect solution for deep space missions, given Starship's immense dry mass compared to stages like Centaur or even Falcon 9's second stage. In addition to the confirmed variants, we asked our channel members on Discord what variants of Starship they expect or hope to see fly in the future. The most common response was a Starship featuring a robotic arm, similar to the shuttle's Canada arm. This would be useful for returning large payloads to Earth or servicing payloads on orbit. It could also be used to clean up space junk. While this hasn't really been talked about officially, it would be really useful, and it wouldn't surprise me if something like this becomes reality. So that's every Starship variant that we know has been under consideration. It's quite a big list, isn't it? A bit ambitious, maybe? There's never been a rocket as multi-purpose and varied as Starship aims to be. Having several different versions of the same vehicle can be excellent for increasing flight rates, but it can present its own challenges. It can be tougher and more expensive to perform maintenance and refurbishments on a fleet of different vehicles rather than just one version. Certain parts needed to prepare an HLS Starship for launch might not be compatible with a Starlink launcher, and vice versa. But whilst it will be more difficult, it won't be impossible. Remember, SpaceX is aiming to make Starship require minimal refurbishment and be as simple as possible. The best part is no part. The easiest comparison to make is to airliners. Many passenger jets have cargo variants for long-haul freight. They share the majority of parts, are made in the same factories, but they do have notable differences, mainly covered up windows and a massive cargo door in the side. But even with those key differences, it's still profitable for airliner manufacturers to have those different varieties of planes. SpaceX and Starship shouldn't be different. In fact, SpaceX has said countless times that they want Starship to resemble an airliner in its operations and refurbishment needs. So no, this may not be too ambitious for SpaceX in the long run. We know they're starting off slow, beginning with Starlink launches to test Starship with the company's own satellites before moving on to customer satellites and eventually crew missions. SpaceX will introduce new and more complex variants of the rocket as they have the capacity to do so. And they have the money to do so as well. Falcon 9 is the highest launch cadence rocket in the world ever, often launching several times per week. Starlink is almost fully operational and should be a major source of revenue, not to mention acting as initial Starship payloads. It will still be a while before we see non-Starlink versions of Starship launch, let alone crew fly. SpaceX has said they will fly hundreds of missions before a human leaves the ground under the power of a Starship, giving them plenty of opportunities to try out their new Starship variants. Thanks for watching and goodbye.